AMI Sharp Focus begins now. I'm DJ Demers. Welcome to another episode of AMI Sharp Focus. We're here in Calgary for the centennial edition of the Calgary Stampede. That's right, the Stampede is turning 100 years old this year. Hanging out here with a bunch of people I just ran into at the Stampede. We are here to see Garth. We got Garth Brook tickets from BC. We're very excited. So we are for a girls weekend to come to BC. That's so perfect that you mentioned that because I'm actually about to do something that excites me greatly. I got to chat with Garth Brooks. Oh, did you? So thank you so much for chatting with us. And now we're going to throw to me chatting with one of my heroes, Mr. Garth Brooks. Oh, lucky. At the press conference, hey Garth, I've shed a few tears in my lifetime to your songs uh, oh, that you. summer, the dance, thank the you. river. Just wondering, is it okay for a cowboy to cry? I cry every day, man. We were at a campfire last night, and uh, you know we're singing every Haggard song or possibly around the campfire, and then the guitar goes over to my youngest, and my youngest, my youngest has got it. She's got the bug, but she's got the goods to deliver too, and she starts playing and singing. I have to get up and leave because I spent my whole life crying, man. I seem the older I get, I cry at commercials now. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but God gives you teenage girls, you cry a lot. You know? <laughs> Standing so, here with Garth Brooks, it's a pleasure for me, I gotta tell you, I grew up on Garth Brooks. I used to run around my house singing Combat and Rouge, <laughs> all the words. So uh, it's really great to meet you. How's, uh, how's Calgary treating you so far? Everything's great, it's just like you remember. I mean, we pulled up and saw the dome and just went, oh man, it's just like coming home. I love this place. After all these performances, all these years, what's your one favorite song that you still love performing more than any others? That's tough, because performing, your fa I mean, the favorite song that we do of ours is a dance. I just love it. I didn't write it, uh, but I tell everybody I did. But, um, and then performing, you called it, Calling Baton Rouge. A lot of people think it's Friends in Low Places, but when Jimmy Mattingly hits that fiddle, that, oh my gosh, that lick, and these people go up on the ceiling, that's what it's all about. Last question for you, Garth. You're a, you're a good old Oklahoma boy. I'm wondering, uh, what's the most important part about being a Southern gentleman? What's the most important thing from a, a manners perspective? I, I have no idea. I just know that if you didn't mind your manners, my dad, who was Golden Gloves boxing champion in the Marine Corps, he would he would hit you on the head, and mom was tougher than him. <laughs> she would she would put you in your place real quick if you didn't have your manners. Most of it's man, it's just just be grateful. After the break, I go one-on-one -on -one with Canadian music star Johnny Reed. I'm standing here in front of the stage at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome with Mr. Johnny Reed, who will be performing here in just a few short hours. How are you doing today, Johnny? Good. How are you doing, DJ? Not too bad at all. I'm enjoying the uh, Stampede so far. How are you enjoying the uh, centennial edition of the Stampede? It's been wonderful. I mean, uh, what's not to love? You know, a lot of people. Uh, a lot of good times, and uh, it's been wonderful, wonderful so far. What does it mean for you as a Canadian artist, you know, coming up in the industry, you played smaller venues here in Calgary and throughout Canada, and what does that mean to you to actually feel that rise and now be headlining the stage here? Well, first of all, thank you for saying those kind words. <laughs> You're right, I have played for many years, uh, whether it be up at Ranchman's, or whether at the casino and uh, uh, the Coca-Cola stage, uh, you know, it's been a lot of years, it's the result of a lot of hard work, not only on my behalf, but all the people that surround me. So it's, it's going to be lovely as a Canadian artist to step on a big stage uh, where most of the time it's usually American artists that get to stand on them. When I was a young boy, uh, I did a lot of martial arts. I wasn't very good. I kept getting my nose broke. And my mother and my father took me to a hospital to see if they could do something about it. And they said, well, he needs his nose cauterized. So I went there, the doctor came in, and uh, it went too far, and he burned my inner ear, uh, messed me up, and I started speaking louder and louder and louder and louder until my mother was like, why are you yelling? And I said, I'm not yelling, because I couldn't hear myself. And uh, I basically lost my hearing for just over a year in my life, uh, which is, I think, very ironic in what I did for a living. <laughs> So I had to go through some speech therapy, uh, go through a bunch of exercises. You know, luckily I got my I got my hearing back. I don't think it's that great, but but it's good enough that I can that I'm able to do what I do. And when I'm singing, I still hear my voice inside a little bit. If you take your hands and put them over your ears, that voice that you hear inside, that vibration, is kind of what I felt or what I heard for many months. And uh, I still use that to this day. Anyways, I want to tell that story to you just to 
sort of encourage a lot of kids out there that may be um, dealing with hearing, you know, hearing loss or hearing issues, that, you know, there's, there's hope uh, that you'll get your hearing back. And if you don't, you can still feel it. You can still feel the vibration, you know, and, uh, and there's music in all of us, whether you can speak, hear or see. Music is music, you know, so. Coming up, I learn how to talk like an auctioneer, and Wade Brown witnesses a train robbery in Stetler, Alberta.